First, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm very honored to be here with this uh, very special house uh, audience. And I think I'm the only uh, nuclear medicine physician in the room. So today I'm going to talk about PET imaging. That was uh, what I was asked to talk about. So here I put an overview of all the biological targets you can use to send a PET imaging probe to prostate cancer cells to emit radiation and use it to create images. So you have the uh, testosterone receptors, you have PSMA, you have also bombazine, uh, you have the metabolic pathway, flucyclovine, the, uh, the amino acid, the lipids, and of course FDG that you know very well. Today, I'm gonna focus only on one, the one that is a game changer now in the prostate cancer landscape, it is PSMA. So here, it's another way to look at this, more uh, visual. Uh, you see here the bone metabolism and the bone microenvironment surrounding prostate cancer lesions in case of bone metastasis. The prostate cancer cells metabolic activity with uh, glycolytic activity, the phospholipid activity, and the uh, amino acid. And today, again, we're gonna talk about PSMA, prostate-specific membrane antigen, which is a cell surface protein expression that we're looking at. And why is it so good in prostate cancer? It is because for uh, many reasons, I, I will not detail here, the level of overexpression of the protein by the prostate cancer cells is super high, about 100, 1,000 times about, uh, above the normal levels. And that leads to these very contrasted images with an intense tumor to background ratio, uh, which uh, depicts here the, some prostate cancer lesion here are lymph nodes and, and bone metastasis uh, very clearly because of this high overexpression of the protein by the prostate cancer cells. And it's been about probably five to seven years now that it is being used. At UCLA, we use it for uh, since uh, 2016, and it's really a game changer. There have been multiple studies, thousands and thousands of studies during the past five, six years now, and clearly, PSMA PET is more sensitive and specific than the other imaging modalities of reference for detecting and localizing prostate cancer at the whole body level. It's a PET CT imaging modality, so it's a whole body imaging modality. Uh, and so the key strength is really to detect nodal and distant metastatic uh, disease. Uh, so it enables earlier detection and more accurate distant staging. The first FD approval came in December 2020. It was uh, at UCLA and UCSF. The method of manufacturing uh, was approved there, and you know we do it on site. Uh, was followed quickly after the year following uh, with Medicare coverage. Now it's included in the NCCN guidelines for uh, many indications, initial staging, uh, recurrence, and even in more advanced stages. Um, and then later, Following uh, the initial approval, many commercial agents were made available, uh, which provides wide access and wide availability of PSMA PET imaging to patients across the country. So you have Pilarify, you have Illusix, Locamets. Uh, now they're all available, which is great for patients. Before, it was available only through research, or only at UCLA or UCSF. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the capacity uh, of PSMA PET for intraprostatic staging. Um, when you look at what MRIs show and what PSMA PET show in prostate cancer, overall, um, first of all, most of the studies so far in PSMA PET were done in high-risk patients. Of course, it's for distant staging, so it's patients with a risk of extraprostatic disease, so with pretty aggressive cancer. Uh, and when you compare what MRI is showing there and PSMA PET, well, you always have a pretty significant overlap but it's never 100% overlap. There is always a part that is missed by MRI and a part that is missed by PSMA PET. Um, overall, it seems that um, it's about 50 to 60% of real overlap. It seems also that the PSMA PET show a little bit more extensive uh, volume of the disease in comparison to MRI. When we do studies at the end, uh, for the prostate cancer detection rates, PSMA PET doesn't really change the detection on a binary level, cancer, not cancer. It does change the limitation of the disease and the way you control the lesions, though. Now, this can be different if you go at lower-grade disease, grade 2 
or grade three or even lower, that, that, that would be different. Still in the aggressive disease, features like uh, extracapsular extension, T3A, T3B, can be seen uh, pretty nicely on uh, PSMA PET when you see an image like that, or where you see an image like that, where it's pretty clear uh, there is a T3 disease. So it can be used that way. Usually in, my, in the clinical practice, I use the information either from MRI or PSMA PET to consider if the patient has T3 disease or not. This, this graph uh, comes from PubMed. Um, what is interesting here and more relevant for the focal therapy uh, interest is the correlation of the intensity of the signal as uh, reflected by the SUV or SUV max. And here you have the grade group, um, the Gleason grade group. So you can see clearly that the more intense is the signal, the more aggressive is the disease. But you also see that there is quite a significant overlap that you can have some uh, low-grade disease that have increased signal, but never above 10. And you can have some aggressive disease that have SUV max below 10, it does exist. But what is sure is more or less when the SUV max is above 10, usually it is clinical significant prostate cancer. Uh, earlier this year, there was a, a study that looked at the, the, primary, um, the primary trial that was run in, in Australia in patients with the um, in grade two and grade three disease. And they tried to come up with a score, a visual scoring system uh, to categorize patients with uh, high-risk disease or not, or clinical significant disease or not. Basically, when it's focal like that, asymmetric, then it is uh, very likely uh, clinical significant prostate cancer. When it's diffuse, when it's not very focal, when you have some symmetric uptake like that, then it is less likely to have clinical significant prostate cancer. So the field is learning little by little how to read the images and how to characterize the signal within the prostate. Uh, we're learning with my uh, great collaborators at UCLA. We have Dr. Marx here. Uh, we work a lot to, together on focal therapy uh, as well. And on biopsy. Uh, now we have many great stories already of patients who had um, inconclusive MRI or prior negative biopsy, whereas they still have a, you know, a uh, strong suspicion of clinical significant prostate cancer. So then we use the PSMA PET information to contour the lesions, superimpose it on the ultrasound device to uh, target, use it as a biopsy for the target. And in many cases, we were able to obtain uh, a positive diagnostic of clinical significant prostate cancer where the MRI-guided biopsy uh, failed. Here it's more technical aspect I want to show. Um, Sometimes it's difficult with the urine because the tracer is excreted through the urine. So in the prostate, sometimes it's hard to know if uh, the signal is coming from the, the urine or the cancer itself. Uh, you can see here nicely that we do a late acquisition after injection of CT contrast, about 90 minutes. So you see in white here the contrast in the bladder. And for example, here there was a bit of uh, an enlargement of the prostate. So you see that all that signal that we see here on this axial slice is in fact uh, just urine excreted. Whereas the signal here, which is at the base of the uh, left seminal vesicle, or this focus here, uh, a little bit down below, are not related to urine, and so they are prostate cancer lesions. Just to show you a bit some uh, of cases uh, related to high food treatments, uh, here is what we can observe uh, on a PSMA pet before and after high food when you get a good response. Uh, SUV max was 9 here and 1.5 here, disappearance of the signal. It seems that after cryotherapy, it's, there is complete disappearance of the signal. You see here, it's getting completely photopenic, we call that. There is absolutely no signal when it works well. Here's another case before, after HIFU, where, of course, you see a clear progression, local recurrence with an SUV max of 10 here with a clear signal. And I will finish by showing these two cases. The first one will be a, uh, in a patient who received uh, high food. The initial PSA was 28. It was a Gleason 8 disease. You see that pretty big prostate cancer here with an SUV max of 11. Uh, so he got whole gland high food. The PSA decreased to an idea of 4.2 and then start to rise. Patient got MRI guided biopsy that were negative and got the PET scan. The PET scan is here, I detail here. You see that's the initial acquisition we do at the whole body level, 60 minutes after the injection of the tracer. 
And then 30 minutes later, we do a second acquisition focused on the bed uh, to enable what is just below the bladder because uh, the bladder signal decreases, and usually you get a better contrast with the focus here. This was at the base of the seminal vesicle. It was used for uh, targeting the biopsy, and the PSMA pet target biopsy came back positive. So for the detection of recurrence uh, after HIFU here, it helped a lot uh, in uh, the diagnostic. And one last case here after cryotherapy, again, the initial uh, cancer was Gleason 8, PSA was 25. You see this big tumor on the left side here with a uh, very intense NCV of 34. Cryotherapy, PSA decreased to 2.1, that's the nadir, it started to rise. And here is the uh, PSMA PET performed at a time of suspicion of recurrence. And you can see there is a tiny, tiny spot here with a SUV of four, but the lesion is very small. And um, in fact, it was just as the posterior part of the initial lesion. Um, so the, maybe it was a marginal miss, marginal recurrence, a little bit like with radiation therapy. And um, the biopsy uh, that used PSMA PET for guidance were uh, positive, as you can see here again. So as a take-home message, PSMA PET is clearly the imaging modality of reference for N and M staging. That's clear. That's the main use of it. Uh, for the intraprostatic staging, PSMA PET and MRI can be complementary. You have complementary information. Uh, it can be used to guide image fusion targeted US biopsy. We do it a lot now with Dr. Marks. And I think it can also be used to guide focal uh, therapy as well. And we're starting to do that with Dr. Marks. So I would like to thank, of course, all the program support we get, all the collaborators across the world, but mostly my mentor, Dr. Tsernin at UCLA, and my two great collaborators uh, in that space at UCLA, Dr. Marx, and uh, my Radon colleague, Dr. Kishan. I don't know if he's here, but I know he's coming. So thank you very much for your attention.